All right, so let's figure out a way to show reviews if a particular user is logged in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab, again, some pre-written code that I have, and I'm going to put it right after this H1 here. Okay, so I'm going to place that in there. And that is going to be this piece of code. And in fact, I think I just missed one. No, I just missed a couple of things in here. So let's just copy this whole thing again and see if I can make it work. There we go. Okay. So what I've copied is basically this thing where I say, if there's a user, then I want to list the reviews. I want to display a form that will allow me to add a review. And then after that, or, or under that form, I want to iterate through all the reviews that we have. Again, I'm just going to get the reviews back from Strapi. But of course, these will only be visible if someone is logged in. So how do I handle that? Well, we're going to need to revisit the get server side props section in here. And I am going to not only read the slug, but I'm also going to read the JSON web token. And I'm going to say if type of window is undefined, which, you know, because it's a server side, it should be, but I'm going to just call get token from local cookie. Otherwise, I'm just going to get token from the server cookie. So we can actually get the cookie information from the server. And I need to pass it to a request. And if I do that, I'm going to invoke get token from server cookie, which will read the cookie from the headers. And if there's nothing, it's just going to return undefined. If there is a JWT or J cookie, we're going to try to verify that information, just return the JWT for us. Okay, so this is basically a, a line that will either return a JSON web token or not. So now if we have the JSON web token, we can pass that to this call. So we need to say populate and just put a comma and pass in the JWT. And if it exists, then we're going to say headers authorization. And remember, it was bearer space and the cookie. I'm sorry, the token. And if it does not exist, then I'm not passing anything to the request. And this is one step of the process. The other step is going to be something that we need to do when someone is going to submit the form. So when someone submits the form, I want to make sure that I actually post the review coming from this text box. So I'm going to have to write the handle submit function now. So I'm going to come here and let's actually write that. Um, actually, we need to do a handle change as well because let me just see, because we have, yeah, sorry, it's the uh, handle change first and then the handle submit. So for handle change, handle change, we're going to have an event and I'm just going to say set review. Oh, and yeah, of course, because we're using set review, we need to have that as a state on the component where the value of the review is going to start with, with an empty string and then we can set the review to be e.target.value. So I'm just doing React specific stuff, not really, uh, nothing really new here. So then we can do a const handle submit. So what happens, someone wants to send a review. We're going to call prevent default 
and then I'm going to have to read the JSON web token again. And I'm going to call get token from local cookie. So I'm going to get the JSON web token from the cookie itself. And then I'm going to try to actually there's going to be response data, await fetcher, and we will do process.env dot next underscore public underscore shreppy underscore URL, our usual URL slash reviews. So I want to read, I'm sorry, I want to send a post request to send a review. I'm going to pass in the headers. And because we are going to send a post, we'll need to make a modification in Strapi, which we'll do in just a second, but also realize that we are going to only allow people to do the post as authorized users. So we need to pass two headers. Uh, one is content type. We just make sure that Strapi understands our JSON. So that's application JSON and authorization. And we are again going to call bearer and JWT. Now we could do it this way, or we could of course send the JSON web token as props. Again, which one is better? Well, probably sending it as props, but let's just finish this up and see what we get. So json.stringify, and we need to pass a data object, and a data object will have a review, a review.value. It will have a reviewer and I'm going to get back to this in just a second. And then we need to also pass in the ID of the film because that is going to be a very, very important thing, right? Because we need to make sure that we associate the actual uh, review with a film. Okay, so once we have that, we can... Get, so we have the response data, we have that information here, and then we're going to say router.reload, uh, but it's going to be the, a lowercase r. So that also means that we need to bring in the router. And if you want to reload a page, we're just going to use the use router hook. So I'm going to call that right here, which automatically imports. We don't need a capital one. Automatically imports use router from next router. So we're going to call router reload. So we're going to reload uh, the page. And we will also say, should there be any errors? Again, just make sure that maybe as a homework, you do some proper error handling. But I'm just going to say error error with request and just print out the error right there. So I may have forgotten to import use state, which in fact I have. So there we go. Okay, so we are in a good state. What we need to do is come down here and just make sure that populate is on. And now I need to make sure that I have the right permissions set in my Strapi instance. So let's come here and let's just review these together, right? So for the public role, I want to be able to see a list of films or an individual film. Uh, for the reviews, I don't want to see anything. For the Slugify, I want to see find slug, perfect. Let's go to the authenticated role. For films, again, the same piece of information. For review, I have create and find enabled. And for slugify, I have the find slug enabled as well. Okay. And let's just make one more change. I don't think this code is correct. Let's just say if film.attributes that reviews exists, then I'm going to say no, okay, so if it doesn't exist, I will say no reviews yet, and I will also allow someone to add the review. So if I hit save, there we go. So now we have the input field for the review. So let's um, figure out a way to add the review. And I did mention there's one bit that's missing from here, 
and that is how do we get the reviewer so the reviewer needs to be the actual user so what I'm going to do I'm going to grab the user from the local cookie so I'm going to say get user from local cookie hit save so theoretically the reviewer will be set to the currently logged in user okay so once we have the HTTP post ready to slash reviews what we need to do is actually go to our strap instance and just make sure that we have the roles set up right so let's go to the authenticated roles first films find find one enabled review very important post for create and find enabled and then slugify find slug enabled as well and for the public rules we need to have review nothing film find find one and slugify checked as well so just make sure that you have exactly the same setup now the next thing that i want to take a look at is what happens when the data comes back from after sending this particular push request and i have this section here which basically allows us to add a particular review but then i also have this section which will either say no reviews yet or list the reviews now the way the data will come back is that we can listen on the field of attributes of reviews dot length and if that's zero meaning there's a reviews array but it's empty we can say no reviews yet if film dot attributes of reviews exists then we're going to iterate through that i'm just going to read the reviewer and the review that they wrote okay now we could also probably grab the right values here so we could get a review a review and the id but you know you can write this in in any way that you want so i'm going to hit save and now if we open up a film we now get an input box to add the review and we get the add reviews button and we get no reviews yet so let's write one and let's say this is amazing and i'm going to press add review and notice that currently logged in user who steve said this is amazing now if i go to my content manager and if i refresh the view on the reviews i will have this entity here and if i open it notice that it's automatically assigned to the right film as well which is absolutely amazing so now if i go back to films and if i go and click this film again that review is always going to be there and if we log out that review section is now gone i cannot add nor read any of the reviews by the way i just added this extra uh, piece of information to the film so that we can see um, some more info about the film and that's pretty much it in terms of this section of the code now one refactor that we're going to do is we're going to take this json web token from the server cookie and pass it along the props i'm going to say uh, just send the json web token as well which means that we can probably go and extract that right here which also means that we don't need this step to get it from the local cookie but instead actually uh, we don't need that variable either we can just pass it in as it is so let's see if that is going to actually work so we get an error series and it's written from get server side props uh, so undefined cannot be serialized as json so we need to do um, a quick trick here and we're going to say json web token is going to be either json web token if it exists if it doesn't then we're just going to send something uh, that's empty okay so let's log in as steve and everything still works now there's still some work that we need to do when it comes to authentication but i'm going to leave that towards the end because now i want to show you how to actually display the plot because in my case for the content you will see that the plot is in fact some text that has line breaks if i can find it right so it has some line breaks and i want to make sure that i display it in exactly the same way so we're going to look into this in the next video